evening. We're ready to go. And it's, uh, again, it's a battle of desperation here. It's a battle of who can pull themselves out of those relegation spots and kind of peel away a little bit. Alrighty then. Havana with actual change to her face. Something to keep in mind. All right. So not too surprising to see her there. No, especially when we just saw the ban rates and saw how high Habana was. Jackal being the oh wow okay Jackal we actually neglected to mention Jackal in, in the, all the commotion. Um, he's also an operator that is extremely flexible when it comes to playing on this map, just to deal with roamers as well. Mira being banned, which leaves you at the end with probably an echo being removed. If you look at things in general for the region, now we know that Nomad is going to be in play. It might be Operator removed, but Thatcher is going to be in there to deal with them. So it would make no sense to remove the op in this situation. There you go. As predicted, Echo will be the final Operator taken away. So in general, when you look at the context of Bank, all four Operators make a ton of sense. The Jackal is not something you usually see banned, but again, it's Bank. You want to roam more? Remove the Jackal? You still have to worry about the Dukebi. Mm -hmm. But at least Lion is not in this situation. <laughs> Thank the Lord. And right off rip, we're going to get a Nomad pick and a Kaid. So we're going to get Catfish. both immediately. Compl expected. All right. Mm. Well, I talked about Ying not getting through or not being picked when she does get through. But also off rip, we will have a Ying coming out on the attacking side of INTZ. Might try and uh, dictate the pace. And as well as uh, we talked about maybe losing the ACOG on Ash Duds. Seemingly not caring about the lack of an ACOG in the R4C. Yeah, I mean, uh, some some players have moved on to G36. Some people just kind of don't ever run the ACOG anyways. Oh, my lord. Is this actual... Oh, my god, this field of view. Uh, I'm sure we can get that fixed. So soon. there you go. AUG A3, Ertila in the back pocket. He's looking for drones, not going to find anything. And actually, there you go. We're going to see it in action. A lockdown. And it's interesting that he actually uses the AUG because not a lot of teams will run it. But because of the Rtila, the playing an open area for this in similar fashion to other sites on other maps would make a lot of sense because you don't have to worry about holes being opened up from above you. You can focus more on the initial ways of entry in a horizontal plane. This is the kind of strategy we don't really see all that often anymore on Bank. This three-floor roam, extended map control on Bank when defending downstairs. You can also see Drunks rocking the ARX, but Gabrielos will start things off onto Duds. Here goes your Ash, and it looks like that's your Smoke getting into play very early. I'm sure if that was main stairs or into the garage, but either way, Duds' immediate entry with that Ash is going to be shut down with a blink of an eye. Yeah. I haven't heard any, but I'll blame it on the ACOG, but still. You, what a lot of times you'll see is that mute with shotgun, but it's not the case here. Spawns and Gabrielos um, kind of opting for one shotgun, one SMG. Bor maneuvering around for his um, setup drones early on to see if there's anybody um, maneuvering around the map. However, they should be able to spot the car. There we go. He will drop the hatch the instant there's some sort of problem, as you saw with the... Um, with the Jaeger just a bit ago. Nomad had already set one... Uh, oh, no. Okay. Nomad had already set up... <laughs> I'm trying to, but <laughs> that ADS is not helping. That's the thing. It's a lot of utility sacrifice yeah. topside on the side of Pain Gaming for their defense, and they didn't really kill a lot of time. I mean, teams will still take a little over a minute to drone and clear it, even if there is no contestion. Obviously, things will get slowed down with the lack of a Jackal, but at the end of the day, that didn't really accomplish as much as they wanted. It was really, it was Gabrielos' play downstairs that was the big thing. There you go, spots it. So this is now Nomad's flank watch, I guess, just gone. Now Boar setting up for a thermite charge to open up the side of the wall and servers. It's pretty old style of take, right? It's usually the other like angle on 90 degrees that is open to try and bait out utility first. But in this situation, you don't actually have a ton of time for it. And Payne are going to try to take this fight to their opponents, having the one-man advantage. So they're expecting to overwhelm the flank. The Nomad taken away. Well done by FK1. 
FK1 will draw drunks, and here we go. An attempted plant. Boar sticking this for the meantime. C4 not in position. Revolt backing off, not getting the call, and it's an immediate vaulted from Intact, pressuring the Red Hall. The plant will go down from Boar, and they'll all back evacuate. That Nitro Cell not doing any damage. A drop coming out now from FK1 into open area, holding down hatch. Control is Yuke laying in wait, and they have no idea. GCR will fall, ripping up for another one. Yuke will get them both. GCR will equalize things. Intact with another one holding down the plant. They both get no match. Added. Revolts, though, will trade out Intax now to a 2v2. The Candelas come raining down and blinding everyone left in Red Hall. Spawn some Revolts left alone to try and fight this out as the timer ticks away. 20 seconds remaining on that defuse attempt, trying to retreat back up the main stairs as their counterparts had and fall before, but spawns the team kill onto Revolts, leaving spawns alone. There's no time left. It's a wasted round, and INTZ will take it on the attack. A fruitless kill, and another one won't even come out, but a, an interesting hold there, a 3v5 and the attempted flank up the main stairs, squandered by a prone Ying hiding behind a desk. And even more, I want to say, squandered by the Divans. The C4 was in the Valkyrie's hands. Instead of instead of trying to stick the C4, denying the plant, the most important thing is to deal with the objective. She ran back and tried to survive. It was a very aggressive play from Intact as well to jump in, vault over the desk knowing there would be no pressure coming from Red Hall. Honestly, just guessing at that point that there would be no pressure from Red Hall, no one peeking out, probably trying to catch revolts in the animation of throwing the C4. But, but it, it would, would have been at least something, because at the end, you didn't do anything. You had two C4s in your back pocket. None of them were really used. The, the smoke, like what, used one charge and that's it? Didn't really amount to anything? Usually you just burn off the utility, but in that case, you. They didn't even have to. They just... They didn't use any of it. Tremendous post-plant play, though. Honestly, GCR laying... Or, sorry, not GCR. You, yeah, uh, laying prone. Really the difference maker on that one. If he's trying to stand and fight at a desk at a common angle, it's a different story. If he doesn't get those two kills upstairs and intact holding his own inside of CCTV, that post-plant dematerializes in a heartbeat. What's up? Am I am I seeing things wrong? Is this actual 90 FOV? No. Flipping. Okay. Just okay. So I'm I'm not I'm not going crazy. And there you go, G36. All right. It's the ACOG. Everybody's been looking for it, and it makes sense that you switch away. Obviously, now you have the two side grades, right? You can you can run the ACOG G36. That's just not as strong as the R4C when it comes to pure DPS. However. R4C is still there. You just more are, are more limited to closer range engagements. It doesn't matter though. Still, in, in the grand scheme of things, you can still run it play pretty well with the holographic. One one change that actually people haven't really talked about is the fact that see that low low uh, ceiling. Before it was a fa low fake ceiling that would block the vision of the Valkyrie camera. Well, it would block the vision of the Valkyrie camera from the attacker's side, so they couldn't see it and destroy it. Whereas the Valkyrie camera could see through it. Well, now they raise that roof, and it's easy to shoot it from the door. So it's no longer a quote-unquote overpowered position, which is a good thing. Kind of went under the radar, but there you go. Today you learned. Chat. I find it interesting as well that Payne have backed off this multi-floor roam strategy that they brought out in round number one. Now they're completely focused on holding a server. Um, you had it 5v3. You started off quite well on the defense. I said you didn't really kill a lot of time, but... It looks like INTZ were really not focused on taking anyone out from Red Hall other than Intact's extremely aggressive play into CCTV. So an immediate peel back there from Payne. I thought maybe if they brought it out again, they could surprise INTZ and maybe keep a room or top floor as they don't have the Jackal available to them. It's going to take a long time to drone out Bank. But now we approach less than a minute remaining, and it's still 5v5. It's a much better position to be in if you're Payne. You haven't lost anyone. But uh, you still have five people up in the post plants. Uh, should I and Kisa get down and execute? I mean, look at the last round. I Kisa got the execute with 4v5, and it still happened no problem. So, air jab is going to be set by the side of the door. And another one as well, probably on the hallway. No. Already, drunks can set up. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. Just in case there's somebody on the run out trying to fight the plant. And with Kaet being well, not present at all, Ying. They're just going to be able to chuck down those candelas and just play as a support role in the back. Flash in the back. You see Valkyrie 
Just trying to set up for the C4, but no information has been given to Revolt. He tries to shoot at the Ying, but the Candela will still, up, still be up. C4 being prime. 10 seconds left. They will connect intact to go down. Diffuser still in the hands of Boar. He's not gone in for the plant. As I say that, though, it will start to go down. Drunks will find one kill using the air jabs to his advantage. He won't vault in, but he'll still find the kill. Yuck with another one under revolts, and everybody's just diving on. NFK1 will find a kill, but he finds himself alone versus three left. The perfect operator for this situation, though the flashbang will take FK1 out of commission for just a second, but Yuk has him on his radar and on his drone. Still has to deal with the air jab. Still has so many positions to rotate away from. The drugs to the wall will find the kill. Well done, INTZ, the second round even better than the first. Another unfortunate setup there for Pain, especially in the response. So the last time around, Pain, they implement this multi-floor roam to try and kill some time. Doesn't really garner anything other than about 90 seconds burnt, but at the same time, they knew their positioning quite well, and then at the end, when Plant was coming through from INTZ, Pain elect to rotate two people up the main stairs. This time, Pain just try to send everybody into Red Hall, and it becomes a log jam, and it's like shooting fish in a barrel for drunks pressed up right against that wall. So, an alteration to the strategy that I think it was much worse for wear for Pain on that round, and I think this is a good decision to head top side now and change up the bomb site because they looked like they should have been in the driver's seat at least in the first round. It doesn't fold their way; the cards don't fall for them. That round, however, that seemed like a much poorer response to what INTZ were bringing. And INTZ with the Nomad, really. If you know they're bringing the Nomad constantly, you really should be trying to flank elsewhere, as they did with main stairs. They shot the air jab. They got off two quick kills coming upstairs. It was a uh, it was a pretty successful flank up the stairs. I'm surprised that Payne didn't elect to go for it again, and it seemed to be the costing of the round because they lost three people inside a red hall in a matter of two seconds. Yeah, it's that PTSD of, you know, losing to the uh, Ying playing in small desk, right? So might have been might have been the decision there, but obviously you can tell the the big power that Nomad has on the map and on the match, even though the air traps didn't actually go off. It's it's like two nations having nukes. It's mutually assured destruction. They're like, hey, you wanna go? I, I have it's big power diplomacy. What what are you gonna do? So something as well for the mind to digest. But that's at least something. We see Nomad being played again and that G thirty six as well run by Ash. I also didn't clock if there was still an Evil Eye alive inside of CCTV, but you could use the Evil Eye to zap off the air jabs to facilitate a flank in. They might be expecting they're safe. Hey, one little zap to an air jab. There's a lot of havoc going on. There's smoke's coming down. And he shoots it through the smoke. No one has any idea it's gone. You vault on through. Surprise. False confidence leads to a lost round. Like, there's, there's counters. That's very true. I mean, that's what happened on the flank, right? Yep. In the, in the first round. So false confidence. They thought it was still there. It was put in a poor position, got shot out, but find ourselves in a CEO defense about to develop into absolute anarchy as a nitro cell from revolt won't connect anywhere close to that exothermic charge. And both walls on the exterior of the CEO office will be opened up now. Oh, and a flashbang will blind revolt as well from the stock hallway. That was Duds who looked like he was gonna push in off of that, but it'll be bore instead. With that uh, carbine on the thermite taking down Gabrielos. It's only your castle gone as Gabrielos was playing the smoke earlier, so a bit of an op change between spawns and Gabrielos upstairs, but they've lost their castle. There's a minute remaining, and there's not a lot of structural integrity left on the bomb site for Payne to defend. Yeah, and FK1 putting himself in the hallway, just trying to, to you know, put, put like, what do you say? It's. It, Trying to just hold the wound for a bit for a bit more. I mean, you've already lost the main entryway, the main position for the attackers to be planting. Just might as well try to not lose the flank. Also, the rest of you oh. team focuses and bore a beautiful bit of pre-fire. Two players down, and the Candela is so oppressive. They even forced the Maestro back intact with one more kill. Revolts will find one, but he gets fired upon by Yuk. Last alive is FK1, the Maestro that was present early on. Be present for too long. Yoke will come in. Perfect usage of the Candela. And Flynn, mm. I think we're starting to understand why people ban me. Yeah, it's a little it's a little obvious here. The last round when they were attacking downstairs, the Candelas didn't really do much other than push revolts off the attempted nitro cell. 
that time around, the Candelas just being, like you said, an oppressive force. Absolutely devastating everyone. Well, the Ash being played again. Nomad in play. Ying and Maverick and Thermite. Not suppressing at all. I'm surprised the Pain want to go back downstairs as well. Well, their big change is having the Ella, right? So it only makes... Aw, oh, FO12 Ella. I mean, you invested two people in the server hold last time. Isn't Ella shotgun, I imagine, with the deployable shield at the top of the stairs, the typical setup for a server hold? Yeah. Is that going to be the change, uh, the determining factor here? You still have a Maverick that Intact has been bringing every round religiously. That's going to chew through the server hatch, even if you reinforce it, so your rotate is cut off. The Candelas, like we said, have been monstrous so far. Yuke leading the charge with five kills so far on the side of INTZ, and it's a... Uh, it's a bit of a showing out right now for INTZ. Honestly, the da I, I'd like to see INTZ maybe try Teller's Archives or Staff Open Early. We talked about it. Saw so Resurgence at SI. Maybe it's maybe it's the Holy Grail of answers here for Pain. With Claude, it might be something to actually run because they only in the opt the first round, right? Yeah. Not not after it. Um, Nomad has had a deterring effect, that's for sure, but. When it comes to this this basement defense, one thing I want to highlight is in the two rounds, well, the early two rounds where they was played, um, both situations, even when Payne didn't really put any players on the top floor to roam, INTZ were always taking their time. The push never came before the 40-ish second mark. So it, it kind of signifies that even if they don't dedicate any utility, they're still burning a lot of time off. So their thing is to, is to say, okay, let's double down. And if if we fail in that uh, blue stairs position, then we made sure that we ran the clock down even more to use extra bit of utility on the other side. Now, I'm surprised why Pulse is not in play as well to try and combo in this and slow things down even more. But the air jab might be one of those um, things that will slow you down and of course being able to destroy everything with the breaching torch maverick will have no problems with that and he should have just enough to destroy both hatches if he runs it correctly i'd imagine so and we've seen good demonstrations of that in the past I think that one uh, showed it off yep your flashbangs ringing out. I imagine that's there you go. the rest of the server hold and as expending the last fuel in the tank of the torch. The drone heading down Red Hall. And I'm surprised that spawns bringing the mute hasn't been able to shut down the drone entry. We've seen a drone in Red Hall inside of INTZ every single round. You have Nomad to try and push into blue stairs. Mm -hmm. if, if they actually throw the air jab behind the yellow with a quick peek, because the FO-12 is not going to have enough range with just a quick peek to deal with you. You still have GCR in behind the server rack as well, but here come the Candelas and the Flashbangs now, raining down the server stairs and pushing directly into Concussion Mine, seeing the backpack and the quick peek. Oh, with the FO-12, Revolts will chew right through Yuke. Another Flashbang comes in, quickly dodging away, but on 5 HP, there's not left much left to be done there for Revolts as he will fall in immediate trade. You still have GCR. Uh, he's still in behind that server rack. Not a lot of time remaining. The second Concussion Mine will rain out and bring terror to this push from INTZ. Oh, an air jab placed right behind him and trying to evacuate his GCR, contesting hotly and oh, just out of range, but the distraction is enough to warrant uh, intact a kill. So GCR will fall, there's 20 seconds left as they all descend in towards the objective to facilitate a plant attempt. Gabrilos in the back and he's gonna start raining down those smokes. He'll have 30 seconds to delay his opponent. C4 is gonna come out, but will miss. A bit too short there on the throw, still. Nomad air jabs being set. Drunks will find a kill on FK1. 4v2 as the diffuser being set. But no, Drunks again walks in. And the damage of that 308 round raining right into his opponents. Gabriel is pushed away. And this will allow the diffuser to be set. The air jabs power is seen and intact. Will find the kill. Pain even with the doubling down that we saw from them. They're going to lose it out. And both teams being effective historically on the defense. This is starting to get out of control. Well, I mean, you really got to credit Drunks on the Nomad play on that one. The air jab primarily in behind the server rack to distract GCR for just a split second. Nets intact to kill. And then the second one in the hallway, pushing, uh, I believe that was Gabrilos left in the 1v3, pushing him out as well, just long enough to complete the plan. Honestly, that was a scary proposition. If uh, if Gavrilos is allowed to turn the corner into server door, 
He's in a 1v1 after shredding through Drunks. Drops Drunks the SMG level. He turns the corner into the CCTV door with the shotgun in hand. Maybe he wins that on intact. And Boar is left planting. That's a tough situation to be in. So that air jab, you know, we're finally seeing the effect of Nomad in these sites where there are set rotations that don't ever change. And there's no manipulation to be done to affect it. That's why I'm also very curious that we're heading back downstairs for the third attempt here for Pain. I just... They're 0-4 right now. Actually, this is the fourth attempt. Yeah. My bad. Fourth attempt to... Oh, my! <laughs> Oh, GCR. I mean, just to add insult to injury, drunks on a very common pre-fire through that soft wall in towards the server hatch. Good night. Rob? Yeah. Do you know what the definition of insanity is? <laughs> I mean, you got to feel bad for him. Like, when it rains, it pours, man. And it's, it's just pouring down on pain right now. No, it's revolting. <laughs> God, that's terrible. <laughs> that's awful. Don't ever do that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I need it. <laughs> but there you go. Drunks. Not too drunk on power just yet with that Nomad. I'm just heading in. Getting a quick kill early on is really going to help out the team. At least it's the Jaeger that's sacrificed. So it's some. And actually, one thing with the Nomad in that position, you, you saw her before putting the air jab on the wall. If you can put it on the side of the, uh, the, 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 the how do you say? The a little cabinet. Closet, thing. Yeah, the, the cabinet. Sure. Then it would be very difficult to deal with. So there's still some tricks here and there. Obviously, this is the first week of play of the operators, so play will be refined as you move forward. And really, it's those tiny things that are going to separate um, separate you from a victory and a loss. And there you go. Hatch is going to get opened. Should be able to open the second one as well. There's enough of that uh, Suri left inside. Well, enough of the gas left in the Suri. Revolts again with the FO-12 play. Repeating the same strategy as before, at least there's ADS for him to play with, but once the those ADSs are burned and the candelas come in, they, this is gonna get really complicated. And putting Maestro here, it's definitely not a great spot. No, you have to put FK1 in behind the server rack to fill in for GCR's vacant spot that his dead corpse now leaves, but Yuke is still gonna shred through these guys with those candelas. And you see Revolt's getting a little more aggressive towards the top of the stairs now. Intact will be first point of contact, and he will be deleted off the server. Leveling things at a 4v4, an unfortunate timing there for Yuke as FK1 looks skyward through the hatch and will destroy you with another shot. Boar will take down FK1, and the Nomad not enough to keep Ro keep drunks alive. So now Revolt's having top hatch control. will drop back down the server hatch as Boar continues to try and push down the dirt tunnel. 30 seconds, and it looks like it's going to be a retreat here from Revolt back to his server stairs position. Duds coming in support as they still need to clear out server. There's not a lot left to be done. And this is angling in towards the first successful round for Pain. The flashbangs come raining in. Will blind Revolts as he'll turn the corner back to safety. 15 seconds. Duds will take down Revolts finally. But now you've got Smokes and a Nitro Cell remaining on the side of Pain Gaming. Boar, not really a lot of time to breach through the wall. They're just going to rush straight into the bomb site and immediately being spotted out by the Evil Eye. The Diffuser has been dropped. Boar is down. Will choke on the gas and Nitro Cell errantly. There's no time on the clock. And Duds will rush straight through and claim a kill in vain as Pain Gaming will take one round back on the defensive side and momentarily stop the bleeding. Momentarily, indeed. Uh, now they can't actually play the site. Yeah, I mean, that's probably a good thing, let's be honest. They got that round. It did not look great. It really didn't look great when GCR died off rip either. So back to CEO, that's also confusing. And But there's no Ying, at least, eh? Hmm, I don't get why the Thatcher is, but I mean, eh. maybe they want to make sure that there's nothing to stop them. Should they, uh, should they want to just destroy the wall and walk in, right? I mean, did they run a Thatcher when they attacked this site? No, I think it's the first Thatcher we've seen all game. Hmm. But the Monty play makes sense. This way you want to make sure that, you know, that wall is going to get opened. The Monty can move in or he can actually take the flank. Uh, by walking in from, from the, the main hallway. However, a lot of times with Monty's in play, what ends up happening is the attackers come in from the main lobby and go up Spiral Circus. So, that happens in so many different regions. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. An unfortunate circumstance of timing as well, as there's no Jaeger being brought by Pain Gaming either, so that Ying that Yuke has been religiously bringing 
probably could have done a decent amount of damage, but hey, that's how she breaks sometimes. INTZ want to switch up the strategy a little bit, and okay, you spawning out by jewelry. I imagine he's just going to head to the roof and head over, unless he's just going to try and quickly repel it. No, nope. all right. Thanks better of probably the dumbest decision he could have made in that circumstance. And they're going to spot out one Valkyrie cam immediately revolts. The skylight cam will be gone. I'll continue to drone. So, Boris is going to come in, and maybe this will be the opening strategy to push in from the main skylight entrance. Ah, the evil eye. Oh, I love this. So this has actually worked for quite a few teams. Some some positions, the evil eyes, if you look at it for, for Villa, for example, there's quite a few on the bedroom that you can use like that. It's, it's wonderful when it does happen. And Oh, my. Oh, uh, no. Yuk unable to turn around. Revolt starts it off by killing a huge part of the defense. Or of the offense, excuse me. You sacrifice the Ying to bring the Montane, and then your Montane does absolutely nothing but get chewed up by a Nitro Cell inside the first minute and 10 seconds. So, once again, Pain Gaming in a good position up here at CEO, but last time around, again, these impact tricks coming out from Gabrilos just not having any impact. Yeah, and uh, we saw that even with the C4 being played before, and it was still just not enough. Gabrilos taking a lot of damage and just, well, not a lot of damage, at least from his teammate Smoke, but try to peek away. Impact grenades and Nitro Cells have already been used. Whatever the mute of GCR has one. Maestro is going to lock down the hallway, as we saw before. And that extra man advantage is going to be pretty huge for you on that defense. Nobody using it. Oh, no. Gabrilo set on the floor, but it's not enough to take him away. Ah, oh, he'll survive just barely. And even maybe be able to find a kill. No, Drunks moved him to the side. And he's going to get dropped. Pick up your teammate at this point. It's only 20 HP, but intact is caught between two open doorways, basically. One of them man-made. He's going to have to worry about it. GCR on the outside will find one. Kill Boar with a refrag on Gabilos pretty much at the same time. Just trying to not give INTZ the advantage. Two players still alive for INTZ. Or Pain of four. And FK1 to find it. Boar coming in from the main entrance that he had opened just a bit ago, pre-firing into the wall. But they look at it. 20 seconds left. There's already a player downstairs to play against them. You don't even need a Nitro Cell. The shotgun should be more than enough for it. FK1 firing and rattling in the back of the Alda. And all the spots are coming in. The Nomad fired upon, but Drunks is somehow still alive with 20 HP in the pickup. Boar moves in, and no! It saves him for just a second, but GCR and FK1. They'll clean it up, and the defense picks up the second round on the board. I want to say that Pain are learning from all the Pain. They're, they're coming back. They were, they're, as you say, suckers for Pain, right? Yeah, it's just it's a questionable strategy change there from INTZ. But a good response there from Pain. Uh, that impact tricking really not doing a lot of damage, but the aggressive play from Gabrilos paying off. That's something we also haven't really seen in this uh, in this matchup so far. Any of the aggressive acts being taken from Pain netting them any success, netting them any value. That was the first time really, other than in the very first round, get when Gabrilos has smoke, took down Duds. Ash push inside the first, I think, 30 seconds. After that, there was just no momentum being gained early on from Pain. That time around, Gabrilo stands his ground, wins out a fight onto uh, onto Drunks, downs him off, and then eventually he gets finished off, and it works out. So Pain escaped the half, only down 4-2 after dropping the first four consecutively, and 4-2. Uh, it's not your favorite spot to be in, but it's certainly way better than a 6-0 or a 5-1 that it looked like it was trending to. Yeah, I think uh, the math checks out. The math checks out. Yeah. Quick math. Duds playing the Legion in this case. I haven't seen the Operator in play just yet. Uh, Revolt's running the glass, which actually is an Operator against uh, banned quite a bit. But having spawns in FK1 in here with the Maverick and the Zofia is going to be pretty great. Now, the Zofia might not have the same effect as the Ying, but she's still an operator that can lock you down and slow you out. And if, if played correctly, then she can be extremely powerful to basically stun lock and control the crowds downstairs. And in this case, there's a lot from INTZ being set on the main floor. There's three operators playing in here and even one not far away from them. So it's just up to Pain to try and scout this, but there's so many mute jammers placed everywhere. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
I'm hoping that's spectator sided. <laughs> Anyway, returning to normalcy. FK1 slightly opening up the open area hatch from the stock hallway with that Maverick Torch. And that's uh, the same kind of strategy that Payne brought out in the first round of the defense. Reinforcing those stock hallway hatches into open area and trying to hold that down. But uh, they vacated that plan rather quickly. This time around, it looks like INTZ are investing even more manpower and utility to the top floor. But it also appears they have the same mentality. Open up the hatches, make sure you can drop back to safety. Don't just make it a stand and fight fast. Although, as I say, that standing and fighting and failing miserably oh. will be duds at the hands of FK1. He'll also pop open the soft hatch in the back. And we still have two members from INTZ over by archives. Uh, even with the increased swap time for Maverick, it still works out. Hmm. All right, Spawns will at least uh, find a second one. Drunks is going to get taken out and uh, it looks like that whole top floor hold is not really working out because if you look at things, as I mentioned before, um, INTZ on the attack were slowed down considerably, even when Payne weren't, you know, actually doing anything on that main floor except for having one operator in by the stairs for so close up. Shotgun will down and should be able to finish off one. There you go. Revolts, though, is... Still up, and he'll find a kill on Yuk, though. There's only one player downstairs, and Smoke of Intact will have to decide what to do. Boar has to actually break the wall and try to come in. Whilst you already hear the Legion Goo Mines coming off on the opposite end, the Glass walked into it. Wait, what? They're on the top floor with 30 seconds left. They haven't opened anything. They have to walk down the stairs. Oh, no, this is huge. Intact can just stop it right here, right now. He'll fire into the side of the sledge. GCR is alive. Not for long. Board will take away the grenade fired right into Intact, but they need to run right into them. Spawns will find a kill in a 1v3. War will drop down to try and reinforce. Eight seconds left on the clock and a 1v3. They're going to plant in the back. Board looking to peek. He knows where one player is. He'll win it out. Pushes in for the second, and GCR is so close. And that could have been disastrous. But the attacking side of Pain Gaming will find an extra round on the board to make it a 4-3. to three. Well, it's three straight for Pain. It was a hot start there for INTZ, and then ooh, Pain there as well. They have the 4v2 advantage with 30 seconds left, and you still have a defender roaming in Boar at mute. There was only one player downstairs as well. The smoke. Intact wasn't even actually on site. He was on server stairs too. Site was completely vacated for INTZ. Yeah, so. but then, oh, four-man advantage? Guys, 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 let's all go through the stairs. It was a dangerous proposition. Like you said, if Intact wins out that gunfight onto GCR so immediately, yeah. GCR and spawns, either one of those situations turned drastic. But I really wanted to point out Pain Gaming's patience, honestly. You see a heavily invested roam set up like that on bank, your first instinct is to kind of jump in and start challenging and picking away at a piece at a time. Instead, you still have personnel holding Skylight for rotations constantly. Almost two minutes into the round, spawns, cuts down duds, coming up square stairs to the top floor for a flank that would have been devastating. You still had FK1 and Revolt on the top floor in that stock hallway. Credit to Pain Gaming for fixing their mistakes on the defensive side for the last two rounds and playing that attacking round beautifully, letting INTZ walk into the trap they laid. Are we watching Vitality? <laughs> kind of feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah, actually, what is it? On Monday, you were over at my place? Yep. Before we went to work, and yeah, it's, we were watching some Challenger League for EU, and it's like, uh, what is it? It's uh, on, on the UK stream, and they're like, yeah, Vitality were so fast in the execution. They never balked down. They they always were moving on. I'm like, what universe are we in? Yeah, well, what happened? <laughs> well, obviously the whole the lineup basically changed completely. But it's just weird to hear the the the, the name and the connotation. Yeah. Right. But you know, still in this situation, holding the rotation angles for a long time, it it's smart because it worked. If it didn't, we'd be singing a completely different tune right now. Absolutely. Well, a minute in, and it seems like Payne are still taking this cautious approach to everything, and they're turning out absolutely everything this time. They don't want to deal with another situation with Boar laying in wait inside of Archives, and not to mention he's also changed operators off to a Pulse, an operator we haven't seen at all. So we're getting a wide variety of operators in stark contrast to what we were seeing in the top picks to start off the broadcast. And I'm actually a much bigger fan of running the Pulse in this situation. We're like, hey, you know, our, our roam play didn't work. Let's just double down and play something that actually will always work pretty much. We'll play the pulse downstairs. 
We have an extra set of C4 with Yook. We have info on the hatch because the shutter bug is set correctly. And actually, because it's set right on that, um, right on the lamp, it actually does not um, affect the shading behind it. So you can't really spot it until you really look at it. And because of the lighting and stuff, it can really get complex. Now, the smoke playing in this position on the blue stairs is a bit odd. But at least he's trying to slow things down. They want to use the C4s to hold down the take instead of running it in um, what we're used to, which is smoke first, then C4. One of them is going to be expended, actually. And to no effect, I wonder why they did. Well, Intact. Oh, here comes the frag grenade coming out from GCR, but it'll be drop point blank range with a shotgun of Intact down, but not finished off just yet. He's baiting for another one to come, trying to clean the kill, but now Revolts. Sorry, now that's Gabrielos on the Thermite. He'll take the challenge and fail immediately. Gabrielos will fall. Another one on the floor, crawling away in desperation. Spawns will now play the game of peaking Intact, so an impact charge will come out and not do any damage. It will push Intact down the stairs, though, and they facilitate the revive onto GCR, but only 20 HP and 20. 20 seconds remaining. Duds will fall as Spawns looks downward through the hatch, but now playing point blank once again with the shotgun. Intact, the X Factor on the round. Intact will finish it off the SMG 11 2 for him as he cleans up his down of the teammate. Trying to push down the main stairs is FK1, and they won't result in anything. Drunks will round things out, and Pain Gaming stymied by one man on a shotgun on a staircase. There's a man on a mission. Oh, whew. that was uh, a great prediction there, but yeah, that's a man on a mission. And he held it and just baiting everybody into fire. Absolutely wonderfully done. By the time the smoke was dead, 20 seconds were left, or at least pushed away. Just wonderfully done. That's how you hold it. And I, I think I think they learned it. I said, like, hey, let's just play defensive and use the operators that allow us to play in this, uh, in this way. Open area is going to be played. And finally, actually, we're pretty happy to see this because now we can explore the main effect of Cotton. Not just that, but also Bandit being put in play. Is there a Thatcher on the other side? No, there is not. Okay. And the only floor that's destructible will be the one into the, inside the janitor closet, down into the small office and open area. Yep. And the floor in stock down in the back corner. This middle hatch in the middle of the hallway, that's, uh, that's going to be a tough one to get anything in because it's in the middle of a completely enclosed area of the objective like you're not getting anyone in there there's no twitch a frag grenade is definitely not going to connect even from the windows i mean you'd have to be a god to hit that frag grenade either from fk1 or gcr I, there you go. this is looking like a tough scenario just to get that hatch open in the first place they don't have a maverick either yes and that, that i think is what i and tz kind of were hoping for as well because you saw pain didn't run the the maverick um, before yeah all you know they were just focusing on having that glass but cotton will be the first one to get shot down okay right on the rotation not a great start obviously but we'll see if that even have an, has an effect on the rest of the round because i believe their electroclaws their tilas had already been deployed at least one of them we saw i'm not sure about the second yeah, both of them. One onto the uh, the corner hatch in open area, and then one in the hallway hatch. So, did his job. And I mean, Kaya doesn't have the most firepower in the world unless you're really hitting your shots with that uh, attack shotty. Mm -hmm. All right. Try to play against anybody on the top floor that wants to open. In this case, it's the thermite. So you have the opportunity to kind of either kill him or destroy the exothermic charges. Uh, Yoke just firing away, I guess, with the MPX, which is... Look, I know, everybody complains about the MPX, but this is Latin America, and much like APAC, they love running this, and usually it's the top fraggers on the team that play the um, that play the operator and really shine on the MPX. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be too comfortable firing against somebody on the other side with an ACOG, but, hey, I'm not a professional player for a very good reason. Neither are you, my friend. Nope. There you go. We're, we're not... We're not Intero who plays for G2. Uh, I didn't know that they were hiring silver ones. Spawns saved as uh, GCR will take down Boar, the roaming maestro, 
over by Tellers and Archives. But there's only a minute remaining, and they've lost their horizontal control, but their verticality is still well intact. Those hatches haven't even been touched yet. So it'll be a safe haven inside the objective, a rare scene inside of open area for INTZ on the defense. The biggest problem being their utility and their firepower disadvantage. Yeah, it really is all about Kai at this, at this point. It's really allowing them to play this sort of way, and obviously not having the faster is a big deal uh, for the attackers now. They have to walk in through the doorways, and this is where Yuk and his teammates are supposed to shine. They're trying to time it, but Duds, no, he falls, and now intact is fairly low on HP. Yuk, chuck it, let's go! Does he get a kill? No, Revolt's up close, we'll find it! And Pain, what a beautiful round. Oh, finally they reinforced the wall into the... Look, if this was Kix, he would have said they threw the round. And I would have to agree. Oh, that Nitro Cell could have done so much damage. Two of them rushing in, the no, Glaz and the Sledge. Look, we both know it's more important for the Valkyrie to use the MPX to fight at 30 meter range. It's exactly what she's built for. Well, Pain, take another one back. Now INTZ not going to try and replicate that, and uh, FK1 picking up the Mav, probably a smart decision, <laughs> given uh, how how poorly Pain tried to get upstairs and open up some hatches, and how poorly that went, bringing out the, the Maverick, honestly, being the, the answer to a lot of problems for the majority of that top floor control, but the horizontal control being lost extremely early, not helpful for INTZ on their defense, so we head top four, where there's no possibility of vertical, at least top-down control. Yeah. Well, the dock is going to be brought in for the bulletproof camera, so there's going to be somebody um, at least playing along those that, that staircase, and you know we we see it quite a bit with a lot oh of my. Big, oh no. It's back-to-back -back round. Someone's been peeking close, and then. Ah, INTZ, off to a brilliant start. A 4-0. They allow Payne to claw three back. They get another one on the board quite convincingly, and they look like they're about to run away with it once again, but now in back-to-back -back rounds, they have placed a sacrificial lamb by a window or a door inside the first 10 seconds. Yeah, they're like, oh, we won those for first four rounds too easily. Let's just let's make it a real challenge. <laughs> Why not? I mean, INTZ is, I, I won't try to pronounce it, what it is in Portuguese, but I know it means intrepidity in um, in English, what it is in, in Portuguese. And, you know, intrepidity is still about, you know, the, the, the ability to kind of sustain yourself and keep yourself in the fight, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it might explain, you know, why they're doing this. It's just up for the challenge, right? Thermite's going to open up the wall as Duds is going to drop down and play from below. I actually really like this. This can really do a lot of work later on, but because of the fact that he already lost a player early on, this is going to shift a bit too much manpower maybe off of the site. It's a dangerous game that Trunks is playing, and a couple of warning shots won't connect with GCR as ingressing into the site now will be Gabrielos. Possibly. I mean, there's a lot of time here. You still have Boar with his evil eyes for visibility inside the objective, and you still have intact with three toxic babes to try and slow down this plant attempt. But plenty of time on the clock for pain to work with and bait out utility. They have the man advantage, and really it comes down to Duds and his flank. Will this be successful? Oh man, there's a guy downstairs holding this. He's got no clue though. There goes Spawns leveling at a 4v4 now as we eclipse the final minute in the round. And now Gabrielos trying to expedite things with revolts dropping down to smoke as well. A toxic babe in reciprocation from INTZ, or sorry, from intact on INTZ. But Gabrielos, no cares in the world. And Nitro Cell, it won't connect. GCR will take down Drunks as well. So now we land ourselves with a post plant situation. Intact inside of the janitor closet will down and finish off Gabrielos with a shotgun. They're aware of the flank and oh my, rushing into the hallway with no cares in the world is intact and he'll be taken to the grave for it. Pressing up slowly in the stock hallway is Duds, and awaiting his entry is FK1, and a missed shot, but time expelling constantly, ticking away, almost approaching the halfway point. The man advantage for Payne to just back off and hold this is beautiful. Boar taking a lot of damage to the hands of GCR, and GCR will take down Boar off screen. FK1 down to about 2 HP, but it's Duds alone. No help anywhere in sight, and we revolt, peeking back out of the objective. 
We got a 5-5. We're guaranteed going the distance on bank. And I really don't know how to how to you know phrase this or put this into perspective. Is it is it just INTZ throwing rounds or for lack of a better term really, but or, or is it pain that's just clawing it back and it took them a while to kind of warm up to the game? Well, I mean, it's been an incredibly attacker-sided game. Yeah, that is actually very true. The interesting point, though, is that INTZ were running the Nomad nonstop. Mm -hmm. Pain haven't touched it. Very true. So is it Nomad? Because, I mean, Pain are running up attacking rounds. Although I would say INTZ are kind of gifting them a couple of these with the immediate deaths in the first 10 seconds. That's not helping things. Yeah, I mean, Pain played bank against FaZe. They got absolutely murdered on it. It was a 7-3. Um, they lost five rounds on their attacking side. So it seems like things have changed and improved for the squad. I have to say, it's pretty impressive what uh, you know has been happening throughout this. INZ also played against Liquid, and they got murdered as well. 7-3, and it was, guess what? Five rounds on the defense, run one for Liquid. So five offensive rounds lost for INZ. I think we're, we're trying to find a pattern here, and we're not too far away from it. Please, no sacrificial lamb this time. Okay. We actually passed the first 10 seconds with no dust. We did it. Good job. INTZ, you're not throwing away lives. And I mean, it, it's tough to tell, really, if it's just, like, the first one looked like a poor rotation inside of open area. It looked like Drunks was just caught out. I mean, he got wall banged through a window and a wall. Unfortunate circumstance, but you got to know people are going to spawn there A and B, pre-fire the window. It's one of the most common pre-fires in the game. And then in the second round, I believe it was a more aggressive stance coming out. And unfortunately, it just didn't pay any dividends. So finally, we see INTZ keep all members alive, approaching the first minute being expired. And it's a downstairs defense that they won quite handily the last time. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's a lot of What is that array? Oh my god. <laughs> Look, Rob, I'm no expert. Listen. Last but time. I'm no expert, but I think, I think this position is important for the defenders. And last time they defended this, it was intact on an island, just holding on a staircase that completely ripped through all of pain. Why not give him the best chance to succeed? He loses one ADS and a half of another one. He's still got three more charges, two more charges, one more charge left, zero <laughs> charges left. The smoke will come out and there goes the frag grenade to just decimate all the corpses of the magpies. Oh, man. Okay. At least he didn't die to the last grenade, because that would have been ridiculous. Like, okay, we burned away six bits of utility. Let's go. <laughs> That's one more. I'm just going to run away, and boop. Gets down. Well, at least that didn't happen. Drones are going to get sniped one by one. So many shells. And the shotgun and intact. He's got it. No! He actually yeah. gets it. Oh, so much damage done to Revolt. CCR will move in, second grenade, but still not enough to take the smoke off of this position. He's going to keep it for so long, 52 seconds on the clock, and nobody has the ability to push. At least the Thermite had opened up a hole. And that's the Skylight Hatch. CCR to find a kill on Duds. But he's so low on HP, and Revolt's being down to pretty much 60. They're going to try to stun him. Intact will collect one, and is there more? The Grim Reaper is waiting, and the Scythe is out. Just stunned again, the Zofia continuing to stun and finally spawns. We'll find the kill, but not a moment too soon. Three players left alive with a Nitro Cell, two Nitro Cell make that in the back pocket of Boar and Yuk. They can hold off any sort of last second rotations that, yeah, this, this round could go very easily the side of the defense. Gabrielos will go in, but is there enough info? Should be able to snipe out the Thermite here, but they have to stick it at some point. Eight seconds left on the clock. Smokes are gonna come out. They can see through it. There's Nitro Cell thrown up. It will not connect with anyone. The Zofia will find the kill. Spawns turns it, but Boar connects. Gabrielos is down, and the defense will win it out. INTZ to put the sixth round on the board and guarantee at least one point at the end of the day. Intact, on smoke, on server stairs. He's the panics of LATAM. Name me a better duo. I'll wait. Honestly, I, that man just continues to hold down the stairs, and it continues to throw a wrench in the plan of Pain trying to attack it. They continue to waste all the utility on it, and they can't get him out. And then their last-ditch attempt, when they realize the clock is running down on them, they've made zero progression, is 
just throw bodies at him and see how many fall. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't got I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those darn kids, those darn C fours and evil eyes. That's the thing. Angry old man advantage. yells a cloud. They had the man advantage. They just didn't have the time. Yep. Again, it's just that time wasting from intact on it, the stairs and look. Time. I know we talk about drone economy. We talk about utility and everything, but something we we can't always. Um, mention and keep focusing on too much because of so many moving parts is time it's literally the most important resource that the defenders have to their their side and if played smartly and correctly then you don't really have to worry about anything and so far INTZ are doing a pretty good job at that even with the amount of losses that they've had in total but i remind everyone that Game number one that these two had between another was Payne winning 7-5 on Oregon at play day that one. If INTZ wins 7-5 and they end up with the same amount of points at the end of the season, they're going to be tied in head-to-head, -head, which means you need to go and check the, the overall um, round counter. Yep. This is going to get to like multiple levels, like Inception. Well, unless it's a three-way tie. And then you go head-to-head -head between the three teams that are all tied right. for round differential between them all. Roberto and it turns into Flinero. a math fest. Roberto de Flinario. Yeah. Don't you love math? <laughs> yeah. There's a difference between loving something and being good at it. I like this. Pre-play C4, picking out constantly to know where it is on the Valkyrie camera, and Intax just going to wait it out. Oh, and here comes GCR, just... Not doing anything anymore. <laughs> He's going <laughs> to blast him into the stratosphere. GCR will fall. It's all the reworking he will do onto the ceiling. And they also have the backside of the teller's wall opened up. Establish any flanks. And oh my, Yuke taking that engagement against Revolts and doing nearly 60 damage with the MPX at that range, but will inevitably fall to spawns looking to throw those previously made holes from GCR. Some good teamwork, but there goes intact as well. So suddenly a wonderful position for INTZ to be in turns into nearly a catastrophic one. Don't throw your advantage away, I think is the name of the game. And so far, I have to whisper it, so you have to hear it at this point. Well, they've also all completely evacuated the site. Boar has gone for a flank downstairs inside a server. No one on the objective right now, quite similar to the time they played uh, server and CC last time. One player is already trying to move in. I don't know if Spawns was able to get into into the site, but Boar is coming back, and he's going to get spotted. The drone untimely here for Boar. Revolts might just be holding off the rotations, but they actually need him for the push. It's a good thing that Payne have a soft wall and destroyed bottom side to uh, to kind of play against the the roam, but that works in both ways, really. A bit of an homage for, for Emzo, but Boar can use the stairs to his advantage, though Gabrielos will go and plant behind the shield and the smoke. Everything is set so well for him, and Payne will get a free plant. Spawn's already on the site, and everybody kind of evacted. The instant intact died because he peeked a bit too wide. Spotted, Duds will go down. Unfortunate, this is looking like a tie here. Flynn, Drunks, and Boar in a 4v2. The advantage was INTZ side, slowly weeding away. Sophia and the Thermite looking to make even more work of this run. A walk into the site, at least won't have to worry about anybody in the back, but so much damage already done to Boar. 1v3, as we've seen ourselves so many times, and FK1 will land the last one. Round number 12 will end in a Pain Gaming win. It means we're at a tie. 6-6. Six, six. Result between INTZ and Pain on bank. Crazy seesaw of a last round there. And honestly, a lot of those rounds seesawed. It really looked like it was going to be INTZ just completely running away with this game off rip. A 4-0 lead. And then, I don't know, Pain woke up, man. Payne woke up and were able to bring it back and commendable effort from them. We end in a draw, which means both of them will retain their positions. Yeah. In the seven and eight seed, no changes made. Payne's still in, uh, I believe, the eight seed. And, uh, Payne is at eight, uh, so. yes. They're now up one point, obviously, so it's five, five. Yep. Um, so in, in general, still, Payne Gaming has the advantage because of the two rounds that they had. This is very similar to what we had on Monday. Yep. So had they actually tied, then 
we would look at points first, then head to head, then round differential. And round differential is at a minus 20 for pain, at least not counting this game, and minus 10 for INTZ. So INTZ have actually had much closer games than what their scoreline shows. Oh, we actually have something. Oh, Look, no. we don't know what people are showing us, and production want to have something on the screen, so they're saying capture cam replay. So I don't know what they picked up. Show it, show it. It's fairly low on HP. Yuck, chuck it, let's go. Does he get a kill? No, revolts up close, we'll find it. And pain, what a beautiful round. I love it. You can see the frustration, you're like, ah! Oh! That's that's the, the gift and the curse of having the X-ray. That, because you can see everything in perfect time and you just want to scream, just launch the thing, man. I, I may or may not have done that also on Consulate on EU Pro League 2 for like 15 seconds. Chuck it! Go! It's, just, it's unfortunate. Obviously, with, with yeah. the X-ray, we have the power of hindsight. Yep. Captain Hindsight. There's, there's a bit of an Easter egg for you, but yeah, unfortunate. Anyways, that's game number one. It ends in a draw 6-6 six, six between INTZ and Pain Gaming. We'll be back for game number two in just a few minutes.